Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to a very special vlog here on the YouTube channel. Now, many of you might know my story. I was actually a golf professional in my former life, and that was actually the first job that brought me to China, you know, many years ago. And recently, I had an amazing thing happen. I had one of my former clients reach out to me on WeChat and say, Cyrus, I'm here in Vancouver, and um, I don't know if you remember, but used to teach my son back in the day when he was a junior. I used to teach him junior golf, and he is now a student at Cornell University. But anyways, uh, the two of us are here in Vancouver. We've been watching your YouTube channel. You know, we really would love to reconnect with you. And so today, I'm actually here playing the beautiful University Golf Club here in downtown Vancouver, British Columbia. And I'm really excited because we are going to be, you know, bringing the vlog. And we're going to do a little vlog today. A little bit of golf, a little bit of China. I'm so excited to see them. And I can't wait to take you guys along for the journey. So let's go. Well, you know, it's so much fun to, um, you know, to see you again because the last time that I saw you, you were just a little boy, yeah. um, you know, at a summer camp in Shushan, mm -hmm. the golf club that I was working at. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's so nice to reconnect with your father again. You know, he's mm -hmm. such a such a great guy. And also, you know, just to see you now, you know, you're, you know, you're a young man and, uh, you know, getting ready to graduate and it's, yeah. it's just so much, so it's all awesome to be here today with you. Yeah, and actually, and I, uh, it's good to see you again, because yeah. after many years away and my dad realized that you're in Vancouver. Yeah. And I actually saw you uh, recently on YouTube. That's right, so yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, so when did you start? Well, I started, you know, kind of late 2019 is when I first started. That's mm -hmm. when I did my first video on China. You know, I realized, you know, I had a passion, you know, for China, as, yeah. I think, as you know. And I think, you know, it's been very humbling, you know, to mm -hmm. see the channel grow, you know, so fast, so quickly. But mm -hmm. I think it also just shows that there's so much interest from not just Chinese people, but people around the world that, yeah. you know, want to get more insights into China. Yeah. And I think that's why, it's, you know, when, when your dad messaged me and said, hey, let's play some golf together today. Yeah. I said, this is such an opportunity. I'll bring my camera. Yeah. We'll do a little vlog. You know, I can, can combine, you know, the best of both worlds. You yes. know, I used to, golf is what brought me to China. That's Absolutely. what started my China dream. Yeah. And I'm just really grateful now that I have a platform to keep, you know, working in China and still, you know, helping people, mm -hmm. you know, understand this. And I think, I think today is really awesome because I think your perspective is so valuable. So, you know, let's just, I want to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to know? What is your message about China? What is one thing about China that you want the world to know? From your perspective, from my perspective, yeah, it's a deep question. It's, it's a deep a, question. It's, yeah, it is. it's, it's uh, many different factors. Yeah, civic life, culturally, politically. Yeah, but I think one thing I want people to know that it's just generation, like at least from my generation, we're just very much like anywhere else in the world. Like, yeah, the teens in the states, we share so many things in common, like TikTok these days. Absolutely, like doing it, it's you know there are a lot more similarities, and, and sometimes you just have to. Not, I don't say ignore. It's it's good to look at the media and the, what the news are saying. For sure. But it's also important to pay attention to what the people are really like. Absolutely. And I think your channel is a really great place to show the different perspectives. Because when I uh, first first saw your channel on YouTube, because I was kind of overwhelmed with this kind of narrative in a sense on China, and yeah. I, I I thought it was a little unfair to a lot of yeah, young absolutely. minds and who people who are growing up in China or international students. Yeah. So yeah, it's. Uh, you know, over the, over the U.S. the last year, you know, uh, China has been really demonized, you know, yeah. and just everyone say, you know, chi you know, COVID is because of China. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, it must be very difficult for you as an international student, you know, yeah. from China. And you're obviously proud of your country. I mean, yeah. China's done some amazing things. Yeah. But that's something I want people to realize is that that's something I've said as well. We're more similar than we are different. Definitely. And I think it's interesting, you know, I have a Chinese wife, um, you know, and I know many foreigners that do. Yeah. And you look at like our relationships, it's great, right? You can yeah. have these different cultures learn to have a great relationship. I don't see why that can't be different for our two countries, Yeah. right? Like America is always going to be different, right? America is always going to be democracy. Mm -hmm. China is going to be a different form of government, you know, but when you look at the people, yeah. there, there's so much similarities between the there two. There are so many. You know, and I think that's that's what we're about this channel is trying to grow and just help more people to, uh, you know, connect and understand. Yeah, and one thing my middle school teacher always tells me is we're all the same, but different. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a good line to nice. have. Nice, so. I like that. All right, let's go yeah. play some golf. Okay. Oh, that's a good swing, Tim. Yeah, hot yo. That's very nice. Tim, I want to know your thoughts about democracy. Well, I think it's about, first of all, it's about balance, right? I mean, each country has their own way of running and the best way to govern. Yep. And I think like, democracy in America, uh, there, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages to it. Yeah. 
Uh, but I think it's really hard to define what a true democracy is like these days. Yeah. So it, it's hard to say anything that's an absolute. What's your feelings about, for example, when you know when you hear like U.S. politicians are saying, you know, like we need to bring democracy to China. Obviously, there's a huge cultural difference between China and America, and I think there's a big stereotype as well. Where people think that, like for example, there's no freedom in China. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's what's your thoughts? First of all, the, the tradition is just different. I yeah. mean, the China has a history of five thousand years, and the way the, the how the people think there, yeah, it's very different. So it's hard to force a certain ideology to to let's say 1.5 billion people. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just different countries work differently, and I think it's quite of a uh, I would say it's kind of an ignorant idea to yeah. force this upon, but I think it, it's it's. Um, I feel bad for the people who think in this way because yeah. they don't really understand how the people really think. Yeah. Especially my my family. I mean, how do you define freedom? Is it about that you can? Uh, my actually, my girlfriend always talks about you can walk safely in Shanghai at night, uh, in 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 the late in late night, like one one a.m. in the morning. She yeah. doesn't feel any uh, danger around yeah. her. So I think is that freedom? The the freedom for women to walk around the streets at night without feeling the fear yeah or is it about your individual liberty and having being able to speak up so people think of it differently so yeah i think different systems for different countries I, I like what you said and, and that's something that I've, I've made a mention to as well is that freedom means different things to different people yeah and i think that is um you know i think you know he, you know here in canada for example you know we have universal health care yeah. which is you know which is a really great freedom for canadians but that's something that americans don't have mm -hmm. you know and i think that's something that you could say you know canada does really well and and i think another key point that i want to bring up is that for example when we look at the united states democracy i don't think you could bring that model to canada you wrote for your local representative that yeah. goes on to vote for the prime minister and that's actually a system that's very similar to china Absolutely. you know local elections happen in shanghai mm -hmm. there's a very very big hierarchy in the communist party of china i don't think people really realize that yeah you know how organized and how structured it is there's the politicians it's quite different in all different countries compared to northern europe yeah. so it's really hard to say that you know china's a communist country and it's all bad and it's all like in a certain way there are more similarities between china and the states than one might think there are so, nice i like yeah. that i like that all right well let's keep playing some golf i'm loving this interview and uh, man, it's just so nice to reconnect. You know, it's so rewarding for me as well just to be back on the golf course with some, you know, Chinese people. We just really enjoy uh, coming out here, enjoying a nice day in Vancouver, speaking some Chinese, speaking China, U.S. relations. That's what we're passionate about. Tim, well, we played the front nine. Okay, let's go on the back and let's uh, let's continue our chat here. Let's go for it. Um, so just tell me a little bit, like, you know, what is your feelings about China right now? You know, moving forward, and what about like for you and your career? You know, I mean, you're you're getting ready to graduate from New York. You're, uh, you know, a degree in architecture, five year program from Ivy League school. I yeah. mean, you've got a you know, a, you know, amazing opportunity ahead. Yeah. What is your um, you know future life? Are you gonna go? Are you gonna stay in New York? Or are you interested to go back? To I think for now, uh, I want to stay in New York, New York for a little bit. Yeah. And uh, really to get my experience because there are a lot of. Uh, very great firms uh, yeah. in New York City, especially for for design and architecture. Okay, but I think you know in the long run, uh, either I'm working for a foreign firm or I'm going back to China. Uh, the biggest market is going to be back in Asia, yeah. and it's going to be uh, kind of China-oriented market. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, a lot of my friends and I, in the long term, we're all planning on going back to China at one point. Yeah, uh, but I think it's about it, the integra integration um, of the foreign firms and the local market. Yeah. Uh, or I might even go back to work with my dad in the future, but I never know. So yeah. I just want to get as much uh, out of my learning as possible and internship and just work for firms. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, I think, you know, when you look at China, I mean, uh, just the amount of architecture involved and it's also almost like an architectural playground, right? You look yeah. at some of these buildings Absolutely. and it's amazing. I've been studying a lot of the building designs. I mean, like the uh, CCTV building in Beijing. Yeah. Right? That's, that's from an architect's perspective. I'm sure that's one of the most fascinating it's, buildings. It's a fascinating building. It's interesting you brought up this point because yeah. I'm actually doing a thesis on this. It's okay. about finding the Chinese identity okay. in terms of its architecture because mm. in the past decade we have a lot of these foreign firms and architects coming to China and building all these crazy buildings yeah but I think in the next decade there's going to be a shift with uh, uh, the consumers and the market and developers looking for a more domestic identity and okay. then Chinese identity so I think a lot Good of talented point. designers from the States will go back eventually yeah, and, yeah. and really look for that oh, with that's our a, education abroad so that's yeah. amazing one well, I think that's what so many people um, you know we see I think it's the latest statistics from the Department of Ministry show 85 percent of uh, Chinese undergrad students in the US eventually do go back to China mm -hmm. and I think it's because there's a good market but yeah. also I think when you look at you know the quality of life in China right now it's very high it's I mean, very 
it's, I mean, if you live in Shanghai or Beijing, I mean, mm -hmm. it's really no different than any other international city. Yeah. And the argument could be made it's maybe even better. I mean, yeah. you know, you live in. The, what are your thoughts on that about well, I, I think quality of life in China? And quality of life is great. I mean, uh, why do the students study abroad? Why do you, why do they always want to go back to China if they don't have an internship? They want to go back for for the the good life. Uh, it's very convenient to live in, uh, at least from my perspective, uh, in the big cities. Yeah. Uh, and I think not only the Chinese students, I think these days there is a trend that a lot of uh, students from the U.S., from Canada, who are actually more interested in the Chinese market yeah. and who are not from China. Yeah. So I think, I mean, your platform is perfect. You know, yeah. you, you really introduced uh, the, the different perspective of China to people who are interested yeah. in, in the country and show them what it can really be. Well, I think I'm going to make a new video. Basically, my, my advice is if you're an undergraduate and you've just graduated, I, I don't think there's a better market to go than China. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that I did. Is I was 23 and went to China, and it mm -hmm. was it's amazing because you can advance your career and mm -hmm. really, you know, expand. You know, have a lot of challenges and really grow. And that's yeah. by going to China. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. 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 And uh, another anecdote I wanted to talk about is my instructor here in Vancouver. Which which side are we going to? Uh, go to the right. The right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he was a so I took a lot of classes with him. Yeah, I have a really good relationship with him. Yeah, and he's a Trump supporter. Yeah, and I I think you know I can I, we, we can definitely talk to each other, right? I mean, there are so many similarities, and it's sometimes just, we can't pay that much attention to what's going on in media, and we have so many similarities, like uh, where we spend our time together. He's, he was from Victoria, I went to school in Victoria, and there's so much more to talk about than just pure yeah. politics. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think, and especially with politics, you know, I mean, it really is, you know, becoming so polarized in yeah. around the world. And yeah. I think, you know, what we need to do is really focus on the, you know, the, the interpersonal relationships. Yeah. You know, I think that I think that's so big. And even, you know, I know people get stressed out about politics, but yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you know, you can't control elections in the United States, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. you can you can have a vote, but at the end of the day, you know, U.S. is going to move forward. Yeah. You know, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican leader. And yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, what are you doing in your local community? You know, how are you connecting with yeah. your local people? Mm -hmm. You know, what difference are you trying to be in the world? Yeah. And, and so I think we need to we need to get back to that. I know as an American myself who's living in Canada, you know, mm -hmm. I think Canada, Canadian politics, I yeah. feel is a little bit more balanced. Yeah. I think people here are a little bit closer to that middle line, mm -hmm. you know, that the fact that we're all Canadians and you know, um, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. you know, we're more similar than different. Definitely. But I think in the U.S., it's become so divided. You know, yeah. the, the left is extreme left, the right is extreme yes. right. And at the end of the day, we need to get back to the point that hey, we're all Americans here. Yeah, and we're all humans living on this earth, and exactly. there are a lot more uh, urgent, like um, serious issues that we need to be thinking about. I agree. Climate change and a lot of different things. And yeah. uh, I mean, the last thing is you just gotta contribute to your local community yeah. and then work on that first and then yeah. the politics. Yeah. And we talk about climate change. I mean, this is why, you know, an issue like, uh, you know, building a relationship between China and the U.S. is so important. There's no way that climate change can, can be controlled in the world unless you have the number one and two polluters in the world yep. working together. Definitely. Right? I mean, yeah. if all, every other country is on board, but China and the U.S. are not, yeah. you know, we're never going to solve that problem. Absolutely. You know, even if one of them got on board, you know, have to have a dual effort from the U.S. and China. Yeah. And they're actually, they're a, a perfect partner. If they work together, China has this huge production capability. Yeah. And the U.S. has the technology to, so, I mean, China is great te technologically these days as well, but if they yeah. can work together, they can really push this. Uh, and slow the climate change. So I, I think that'd be great. Yeah. That's what we always say. When China and the U.S. work together, the entire world wins. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog and my interview with Tim. It was amazing to get some perspectives from a Chinese international student who has been studying in New York for the past five years. It was amazing to hear his insights into China, the United States, democracy, and this very important relationship between China and the United States. A couple of key takeaways that I learned from this interview. Tim's first point, we are more similar than we are different, and that is something that I want to focus on. But how do we improve this relationship? I think it comes down to mutual respect. Like I've long said on this channel, the United States is a democracy, that's fine, but we must learn to respect that China has a different way of governing. Just because China doesn't have democracy like America doesn't mean it's wrong. The world is too unique and too diverse for only one form of government to exist, and we must learn to respect China and its government. In addition to that, I think you can see a large level of respect and admiration for you know, the country of America from Chinese people. I think Chinese people want to have a good relationship with America. For many years, Chinese people have always looked to America as the world leader. And although China is rising and getting stronger, getting better, getting more technologically advanced every single year, 
America will always culturally be the worldwide leader. American culture is the biggest culture in the world, and I think that America and China really do complement each other, and a relationship between these two countries is so vital and so important. So again, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this vlog. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in joining our team here and helping this channel grow fast, click down in the link below, check out our Patreon account, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.